We're already at 30, 31, 32. It's not even the end of the block yet. And remember, we're going uphill slightly. 35, we already had 35 kilometers per hour on the first block. Hey everyone, this is Colin, and today I have the chance of reviewing Segway's newest scooter line. This is the City Cruiser P65, which is set to release next week, early July 2022. And in this video, I'm going to unbox this, I'm going to assemble it, and then show you the different features. I'll also show you the functionality of the app. I'll also test the scooter on the road, and I'll show you the acceleration, the max speed, the scooter's range, and how it performs on hills and then I'll just ride around the city and then give you a brief review of it. You can find a link for this product in the description section below. For those of you who are new to this channel, please feel free to subscribe, like this video if you found it helpful, and leave a comment on what brought you here or if you have any questions or comments about this scooter. I also have a video for the newest Segway GT2 Super Scooter, which you can find in the description section below. And I'll actually be comparing the two this P65 and the Segway GT2 and uh, show you the differences and then you can determine if it's worth paying over twice the amount for the Segway GT2. I have a few days to edit and post this video so without further ado, let's get this thing unboxed. Checking out this piece of foam over here, we have two power cables. This one is for the US, and then this is the other one that it comes with. We also have an extension for the shredder valve on the tire. There is a bag right here, and let's open it. There is an Allen key, some reflectors, a few screws or bolts. There's two Segway NFC smart keys. I guess this is to unlock the scooter. There is a user manual and let's just go through these. You can pause the video at any time. In a different language. This is the product manual. Limited warranty. Important information. Removing this piece of foam, we have the handle. Looking at this connection here, there's a green cable that has nothing attached to it. Not sure where it goes. In the meantime, I'm just going to shove all the cables in here and put this out of the way. Removing this piece of foam, I'll take off this piece of plastic that's covering the rear wheel. We'll do the same for the one in the front. And then I'm just going to lift the entire scooter and put it on the table. There's a notice right here that says, charge the scooter for three seconds to activate the battery before its first use, otherwise your scooter cannot be powered on. We'll set that aside. This is the stem, we're going to unfold it. So we'll just lift this up and then this should snap into place. And we need to pull this quick release lever inwards to lock it and in order to unlock it, you see that it cannot be pulled. You need to lift this lever upwards and pull that forward for this to go back down. And it looks like there's an adjustment nut here. 
So I guess if this ever gets loose, you can always adjust it. So we'll put this back in place and then make sure that we lock it. Next, we're supposed to slide the wires and handlebar into this tube, which I did earlier, but I'll show you guys again. And then we'll take these screws that have thread locker on them, and then we'll just put them in right now. I've already done this. I've used this tool, and I tightened all of them already to five Newton meters, or just pretty snug. The pattern is one, two, three, four, five, six. Here are the 10.5 inch self-healing tires. We have a disc brake in the front, and in the rear we have an electric brake. In the middle we have a charging port, and there's just a slot for a plug. And here's the plug that goes in here. And on the opposite end it is the plug that goes into the outlet. So I guess there's no power brick, or the power brick is built inside here. So we'll plug this end into the wall and let it charge for a little bit. There's two stickers. There's one for the NFC, which we'll peel off. And then the other one has a QR code. We'll use our phone to scan it. And it brings us to the Ninebot app for iPhone. And I already have it installed. So we could open that. I tried tapping the NFC card to the screen to turn it on, and it didn't work. So I remembered that on the orange tag, it said to plug it in for three seconds and press the power button. So I plugged it in just now, and the dash started lighting up, and it looks like it's charging. It's at 60%. So if I unplug the scooter, this will go off. And I'll show you that you can turn this on by pressing the power button. It's going to go to this beeping lock screen. And using the signal arrows, we were going to type in 1, 2, 3, 4. So going right, that's 1. We're going to hit this button, 2, 3, 4. And then this will go to the regular screen. Originally, I was trying to pair the scooter with my phone right here, but it was giving me this error. I reread the email that they sent me, and I realized I needed to download the test app. So I have that downloaded on my Android on the left. Let's just go to Agree. I'm going to log in with my credentials. Enable access location. A search for vehicle. It sees the NB scooter 0116. And then it says to short press the power button. Now that green light went, green arrow. Looks like it's configuring. There's two options here. Unlimited and limited speed mode. I'm going to do unlimited. So let's go through all of this. I have read and agreed. Update. Bluetooth was disconnected. Looks like there's another firmware update, so we'll just update that. It's about to finish up. So Bluetooth is disconnected. Here's the app and starting from the top right we have the different scooters. We're connected to the P65. We can lock the scooter by sliding down. To unlock we would tap that and then it shows the distance remaining, the battery percentage, the total ridden. You can record your ride. There's a cruise mode. Okay energy recovery, um, weak, medium, strong, and then tail light settings. So always on, flashes when braking, brightness enhances when braking. Coming to the top left, we have the scooter. 
It says that the vehicle is bound. We have different settings. Firmware update. There's a few new ones. I'll check those later. Cruise mode, energy recovering, lighting effects. So there's uh, tail light settings, which we saw earlier, ambient lights, and then riding habits. So walk mode, start speed, electric brake level, weak. You can change this to disable, weak, medium, strong, speed mode, unlimited or limited. We have higher speed and S mode. Let me try turning that on. For your safety, this feature is not available until after three miles of riding. So I'm, I gotta put in three miles of riding. And then acceleration in S mode, weak, medium, strong. So let's see, NFC and password. So there's the NFC keys and then unlocking password, which you can change. So I'll just leave it default for now, in case I forget. Anti-theft alarm, that's the alarm sensitivity. And then the charging limit is at 100%. So let's go to, there's basic information, serial number, firmware detail, vehicle temperature, battery, battery information, battery maintenance, just a list of how to maintain the battery. New rider tutorial. So you can watch this video. That's all on the device mode. There's moments, which is Segway's feed, and then the me. This is my profile, and I want to see if I can change it from kilometers to miles. And what I did was I went up here to this gear icon on the top left before, and then I went to Imperial Metric System, and then changing it to Imperial. And it looks like it did not change yet. I downloaded the test app on my iPhone, and I tried changing it to Miles, which I've done in the past, and it doesn't look like it's updating. So I think for the purpose of this video, I have to record everything in metric. Quickly going over the different functions, we have the power button right here and you would just press it once, turn it on, and turn your password. And to turn it off, you would press and hold the power button. Here we have a mode button, and in order to change it, you have to press it twice. So if you press it once, nothing happens. If you press it twice, it changes from eco, drive, and sport mode. And there's also a walk mode where you would push and hold the throttle button for five seconds. And then you see this foot or shoe icon appear right here. And then when you press the throttle, it goes a few miles per hour. So we can turn that off by pressing the brake button. Right here, we have an NFC reader. Down here, we have a hook. We have the front brake lever right here. We have a horn button. We have the signals for left. And then right. And for that, you could actually hear a tiny alarm in here. And there's also a speaker down here. So you saw that this flashed five times and also made the alarm. And also strobe down here and the ones in the back as well. Right here, we have the headlight switch. So you would turn it counterclockwise and that turns on and to turn it off you would turn it clockwise and when you're riding with the throttle depressed you can press and hold this to turn on the cruise control down here underneath the gauge there's actually a usb charger and it looks like it's a usb c type going down this tube there's a reflector in the front and two on the side there's color changing leds on both sides as well and it is always on. Looking through the app, there's no way of changing this pattern. On the bottom left, there's a kickstand. On the back, this is the tail light, this is the reflector, and there's two signals. So here's the tail light. 
with the headlight on, there is a running light. And then if you press the brake, it gets a little brighter. So turning off the headlight, you can still use this. And then here's the signals. I found a relatively straight bike path, and I'm just going to test out the modes, the Eco's Drive and Sport. I also wanted to note that I was not able to change it from kilometers to miles in the app the way I was able to do it on the GT2 and other Segways. I think because I was using a test app that that function might not be supported yet, so for this purposes I'm just going to be recording in kilometers or metric. Just keep that in mind when you look at the speeds. Another thing is that you actually have to have the scooter moving before you can use the throttle. I think it has to go like three miles an hour. So this is eco mode. One, two, three. We're hitting 18 kilometers per hour and we're just steadily coasting at this speed. So that's pretty much it. End of the walk, we're still at 18. So I'm just gonna turn around. Right now I'm going to change to drive mode. One, two, three. Definitely feel more power there. And we're hitting 26, 27. 28 at the end of the block we're hitting 28 29 30 31 okay so we went two blocks and we're at 31 kilometers per hour and you gotta remember that we were also going uphill a little bit. So if we go downhill, let's see if we could hit the max speed. Yep, we're able to hit 35, going downhill. So right now we're going to change to sport mode. I'll double tap this, and we're in sport mode. One, two, three. We're already at 30, 31, 32. It's not even the end of the block yet. And remember, we're going uphill slightly. 35, we already had 35 kilometers per hour on the first block. The second block, still cruising 35. I'll overlay the different accelerations and top speeds on those three different modes, and then you can compare um, that information side by side. We're already at 30, 31, 32. It's not even the end of the block yet. And remember, we're going uphill slightly. 35, we already had 35 kilometers per hour on the first block. Right now, we're gonna do an uphill test. This is a slight incline. I would say it's about 20 degrees and we'll see if it's able to take it in eco mode. So let's go and it's able to take it in eco mode, but we're slowly crawling at 12 kilometers per hour. I don't think it's gonna get any faster. Well, 13, let's switch to drive mode. And we're going 15, 16, 17, still climbing. 17. It's becoming a little flat here. And I know there's a hill. We're still going uphill, but the incline is a little less steep. And we're going 29 kilometers per hour. Let's just go to sport mode and try to take this next hill. So it's climbing this with ease. This is probably a 5, 10%. This is probably a 10% grade.
This hill is pretty steep. Hopefully my camera doesn't fall off again. So this hill is very steep. I would say it's like 40 degrees. And the scooter is taking it pretty well. It's like slow to a crawl. So we're going 15 kilometers per hour, but it's taking it. It's getting even steeper. 14. 13. And it's taking it slowly, but it's still doing it. Wow. I don't think it would have done it on the other eco mode. Okay. So let's turn back down and test these brakes. I'm going downhill to test the brakes, so I'm going to change the braking from weak to strong. The rear brake is electric, so going downhill. Right away, before I was using the front brake, I actually felt that there was more resistance on the rear hub, like the motor wasn't spinning as fast. But I'm still holding on to the front brake right now, the mechanical one, because this is a very steep hill. And out of the box, the cable was actually loose, so I had to adjust the cable a little bit in order to get more braking power. I'm letting go of the front brake, and I feel like the scooter is not coasting as much, which means the rear brake is working. Yeah, so right now, it's still going 20 miles an hour, or 20 kilometers per hour. So I was able to, to go down that pretty steep hill with the brakes. It worked, but I felt like I could have used a little more adjusting. And I didn't feel super confident going down. Let's go down this hill. Even with the electric brake in the back, I feel like it's slowing the scooter down enough where I don't feel like I need the front brake. So that's good. And then for the last few feet, I'm going to use the mechanical front brake. So it stopped there, which is good. It was just that first hill was pretty steep. So I feel like the brakes work decently well. I'm actually going to pull over to change the rear braking from strong too weak. I'm actually going to disable it because I feel like it was slowing down quite a bit. I turned off the rear brake and I adjusted the front brake a little and it's a lot better. Just uh, takes a little bit of adjusting out of the box. We're at an area of dirt and I'm just going to test it over this gravel. So we got a kick to go and then let's hold the throttle. And it's Taking the gravel roads, but at the same time, it could use some suspension. <laughs> Very bumpy. So we're continuing going on this bumpy road, and it's able to take it. A lot of this dirt road is just really dependent on these all-season tires. The Segway GT2 was able to take that dirt path, no problem, because it also has like suspensions on the front and the back. I'm about 25 feet in front of a concrete wall. I'm going to turn on the headlight and you can definitely see that there is a beam in front. It's probably I'd say 30 degrees wide and then there's a a beam that's like 10 feet in front of me that's about 120 and then as we go further it gets wider I'm just going to ride around in the dark on sport mode. If you look in front, you can see that the beam is a lot wider than it was against the concrete wall. 
I could probably see 50 feet in front of me. There is that cutoff, which aims low, which is good, so you're not blinding oncoming cars. So I'm just gonna ride around normally to see how it would be to simulate night riding. In terms of the beam, it's like bouncing off of the car reflectors, but it's not necessarily hitting the stop signs far away. So that's just something to note. It's pretty bright in front of me. This street coming up doesn't have a lot of street lighting, so it's still bright enough where I can see where I'm going. It's not as bright as the GT2 for sure, but it's still bright enough, I feel like. Even going 30 plus kilometers per hour, or around 22 miles per hour, I feel like I can see in front of me. I mean, it can always be brighter, but I feel like it's pretty decent for what it is. So overall, I would trust these lights. If the street's not as well lit, just slow down a little bit. PS2 before and I think it topped out at like 15 or 18 miles per hour but this one does 22 and on sport mode you can actually feel quite a bit of torque. I think I was spoiled a little bit because they sent this company sent me the GT2 which goes 43 miles per hour and I actually hit 46 miles per hour on it and it had like all these bells and whistles it's like letting someone drive a Ferrari and then after that letting them drive like a BMW just the comparison you're like man this one had so many cool things it was going super quick and it had so much adjustments to the shocks and then and then this goes 22 miles an hour which is like half the speed and then it has no shocks well, I have to get that out of my mindset that I'm reviewing this independently. I'm just saying that because in my mindset, I went from a like the highest production Segway scooter to a still good scooter, just a little different. Overall, I went through the different modes, the eco mode, the drive mode, and sport mode, and you can see the different comparisons. The sport mode definitely went to 22 miles per hour or 35 kilometers per hour fairly quickly within like three quarters of the block and there was some torque um, these tires are pretty good they're like all season tires they're i think three or three and a half inches wide and they're uh, 10.5 inches in diameter the brakes are good the front brake you just got adjusted out of the box a little bit it's a mechanical disc brake and then the rear it's just the um, brake on the hub motor, which you can adjust in the app. And um, by default, it's on weak. And by changing it to strong, it definitely slows the scooter down, which is good because you can stop or slow down going downhill, but then it also slows the ride down. So if you're going like on a flat surface or downhill and you wanna go faster, remember you have to go to the, the app and change that so I actually disabled the rear brake right now and I'm just depending solely on the front brake because I want like a coast, I want to be able to coast pretty easily. I reviewed the light and it seemed pretty good in the dark. There's a daytime running light and then when you turn the headlight on, the daytime running light goes off and then the headlight goes on and it was pretty bright. The build quality seems very good. It's 52 pounds, and I think it borrows a lot of the components from the Segway GT2. I feel like the left side 
is almost identical to it. And I know the GT2 had, it was made out of like aircraft aluminum alloy. So this might have borrowed some of the parts from it. I think this scooter's range is 42 miles on a single charge. I haven't tested the full range because I need to upload this this weekend. So I'll just put a comment in the description on what my actual range was. This P65 hasn't been released yet, so it's not officially supported through the Segway app. The company that let me review this, they actually gave me a link to a test app, and I don't know if the app wasn't fully developed yet, but I wasn't able to change from kilometers to miles, and then also the NFC cards do not work at the moment, but um, it seems like a cool idea where you can just tap the NFC cards on the NFC reader to unlock it. So I guess you could just give this to a friend um, and they can take it, it for a spin. Or if there's like a communal, um, like a communal household that wants to use this or a workplace that wants to share a scooter, they can just lend each other the NFC cards and they can tap it and go and then they can lock it. There is an alarm, so if you move the scooter without it being unlocked, it does make a beeping noise, which can be adjusted through the app from like no alarm to a soft alarm to a very loud alarm. And then through the app, you can also disable the NFC function and you can also disable the passcode in the beginning or change the passcode by default, it's one, two, three, four, and I tried changing it to zero, 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 so I didn't have to keep typing it in every time. And uh, it told me that that code was not secure enough and it did not let me do it. So that was that. So I just left it on to default one, two, three, four, in case I set this scooter down and forgot what the code was. I want to be able to remember, so I just left it at default. That is something that I noticed every time I start it, I have to put a code in, but it can also be disabled. In terms of the horn, it's just like this beeping noise. I don't know if it'll be able to get people's attention. It kind of sounds like a truck backing up for the turn signals. It makes that same beeping noise and it beeps five times, which is kind of annoying. I don't think there, I didn't see an option on how to disable that through the app, but it's just something that's there. Something else to mention is that there's a thumb throttle, so you can push your thumb and go. The GT2, you'd have to use your wrist to turn the throttle. I guess you could use your palm for this, and that works too. I was going up like 40% grade hills, and I was taking it on sport mode, which is very good, even though it was like crawling at like 12 kilometers per hour, it was still taking it. I think it might have been able to take some even steeper hills. There's color changing LEDs on the front that are always going. I didn't see an option on how to change that through that, but it might be supported later on. So overall, I really like the scooter. And if you have like 1500 bucks lying around, I, would not hesitate to advise you to check one out to see if you like it. Thank you again for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the section below. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to like this video. And then if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. And thank you guys for watching. Take care and God bless.